Welcome back to another Sunday walk video. Today I got a lot to share because I'm frustrated. I'm very frustrated over a couple things. Uh, so I want to share with you guys what I'm frustrated about. Also, of course, talk about the market and Bitcoin and Ethereum, what to expect next. All right, so as for Bitcoin, at the time of this recording, Bitcoin is still sitting around 69,000, it's like 60, 68, 8 or something like that. So overall, we're not doing too bad. I guess I guessed wrong last week. I thought with the possible Ethereum ETF approval that we were going to go a lot higher. We didn't do too bad. It's not like Bitcoin went down or anything. We just didn't go any higher. Sitting around 69,000, 70,000 is definitely a good spot to be at considering again a couple weeks ago we were at 60,000 and below that right and we're right back up to where we were before back in 2021 keep in mind we hit 69,000 2021 briefly before dropping back down so technically if you're looking at our moving averages like the say the 200 day moving average we're at all time high we're way higher than where we were back in 2021 but with that said Short term, we didn't see a big Bitcoin breakout, but it's it's going to happen, and here's why. ETFs, you guys know I cover ETFs, the inflows all the time. Last week we had a tremendous inflow once again. I don't know the exact number, but every day I was covering the ETF inflow, it was like hundreds of millions, either a hundred million or two hundred million. So I have no doubt tomorrow when we get the official number probably close to a billion once again just like the week prior so the inflow shows that institutional interest is not gone it's still here and it's still very healthy even grayscale is now seeing massive inflows no longer outflows so supply shock is definitely in factor still so that's very encouraging whoever i talked about a couple weeks ago in terms of this like mysterious coinbase seller seems to have left or sold off everything because the random volatility and random drops that we saw a couple weeks ago stopped happening so number one the fact that these big institutions and whales are still loading up right now is very very what the hell is that a crayfish right there look at that ready to attack and I found a couple of them in my pool too I don't know how they get into my pool but they do anyway it's just rain it's so weird there's no bodies of water around here I don't know why a random crayfish would just be walking or mini lobster whatever that is all right anyways uh, I lost my train of thought um, Oh, I really forgot. <laughs> big white ETF. Okay. Uh, big whales and institutions are still buying. So supply shock is still happening. So that has not gone away, right? So whoever that's still trying to suppress the market, maybe a lot of the short sellers who got absolutely wrecked, maybe they're trying to hold a hold the line at 70000 once again, trying to you know suppress the price. But you know it's not going to happen. It's only short term. We're going to break through shortly, right? So, um, so I think that's very encouraging. Also, the ETF approval, obviously, that's a big deal. We did get the SEC to relent, basically, and allow Ethereum ETFs. Now, even though the funds do not have a date yet, but overall, we know that's coming. Could be coming as soon as next month right in June so that's also very encouraging obviously big news the biggest news of last week so with that also being a catalyst and yes I do think hundreds of millions to billions may be flowing to Ethereum that is definitely going to cause a lot of liquidity to come into the space and I do think overall it will help Bitcoin I think some people think that it may hurt Bitcoin that liquidity is going to flow out I, I just don't think so I think the, the big institutions that bought Bitcoin, they're going to hold it long term. 
because they see it as store of value. Now, people that buy, the institutions that buy Ethereum, I think they see it as more like a, you know, like a smart contracts play. Kind of how I see it. Like they're trying to invest in the next Google, so to speak. But I don't really think these guys think ETH is a good alternative to Bitcoin as a store of value. I really don't. I think they just see it as a different play. And that's how I see it too. I've always said that. I never understood why Bitcoin maxis are so threatened by Ethereum. The two doesn't really compete. I still see Bitcoin as the greatest store of value that we have. And yes, there's tech being built on it, but ultimately it's still a store of value because it's scarce and it's being mined proof of work. And the inflation rate is so low and getting lower every four years. It's the best hedges against inflation, the best store of value. And even though it's a medium exchange and now a technology platform, but still ultimately it's a store of value. And Ethereum is not a store of value. Yes, it has gone up in price, obviously, but there's, a, there's an infinite inflation rate. There's no set supply. There's competition that's eating at Ethereum's heels. So there's nothing eating at Bitcoin's heels, by the way. So the two really does not compete. So you could be a Bitcoin maxi, right, all you want, and still hold ETH. I, I just don't see that doesn't, that doesn't diminish your stance on Bitcoin, right? So that's how I see it. Anyways, I think these two catalysts are going to drive Bitcoin higher. It's just a matter of time. It's going to happen. All the technical charts also show that Bitcoin is primed for the next leg up. That could come this week. The next leg up will probably drive us to the two estimates, 76,000 or 80,000. If we break through 73,000, 76,000 is right around the corner, right? And I can see us go to 80,000, which I thought was going to happen last week. Didn't happen. Can it happen this week? Sure, of course. So, hello. So we'll see what happens this week. Now, as for Ethereum, Ethereum has been holding very well. At the time of this recording, 38-ish. So obviously it jumped up 20 something percent and it stayed up. That's the impressive part. We didn't see Ethereum go up, spike up and go down. It actually stayed, which means when we actually get the, the set date on when Ethereum ETS will actually launch, we'll probably go see it go higher. Probably above 4,000 by then. And Bitcoin pumps up. Ethereum will follow too, but right now Ethereum is looking like it's a little bit stronger because of the ETF hype. Do you guys hear that, by the way? The buzzing. That's millions and millions and millions of cicadas in this forest. By the way, just for fun, when any of you guys eat a live cicada, I don't know if you've ever looked at it, Kind of looks like a flying cockroach or a very big, very big ant. Would he eat a live cicada for $100? I'd say most people say no. But what about $500 or $1,000? Would he eat a live cicada for $1,000? I don't know. That's tough. That's a lot of money. You guys leave your answers in the comments. <laughs> Maybe that could be one of the future challenges. Anyways, um, okay, so outside of Bitcoin, Ethereum, what else? What am I frustrated with? Well, two things. One, with memes, I gotta say, right now, politically driven memes are dominating. The ones that I've been staying away from. But with elections coming up, it is like the big narrative for memes. So what's frustrating is all the good ones that I think are going to have a, you know, that could have a great future, they're not doing so much. They're not doing so well while these other ones are just blowing up and we see them all the time. Not just political driven ones, but some random ones, random cat ones or random whatever ones. 
it's a little frustrating. But you know what? That's how it is with memes. And I'm sure a lot of you guys experience this too. You get into something that's very, that looks very good, and then it just dumps or doesn't do anything. And then you look at something that's really, really bad, and then it just goes up to the moon, right? It's just like, sometimes you just can't, you just don't know. It's, it's random, like who's behind them, who's not. But I will say the politically driven ones, especially for one party, is they're all skyrocketing. So I'll say that. But anyways, my point to that is, yeah, if you're into memes, I think most memes are kind of holding. They're not doing that well because the market is kind of holding. But I do think it will, it will get better. It will get better as the bull market continues on and as Bitcoin hits a new high and Ethereum hits a new high, we're going to see a lot of them come to life and blow up. So that's for sure. So yeah, that's one of my frustrations. Another frustration is with the ISC. At least one fight is officially canceled. Another fight may be canceled. And unfortunately, last minute, we're trying to fill a fight for Nick Carter. So unfortunately, his opponent, David Hoffman, got a rib injury. So now, last minute, we're trying to fill a fight. And it's been tough because his weight class, he's, he's, he's like around 165. Nick Carter is. So it's hard to find someone that's within that weight that can get their medicals done ASAP. And even then, Nick has to agree because he also does not want to fight someone that's too experienced and will be embarrassed. So there are a lot of factors. And plus, the Texas Commission also has to, has to agree, right? So there's a lot of moving parts. So hopefully we can salvage this. Hopefully we can find a good opponent for Nick Carter. And the IFC during consensus is going to be outstanding. But if we don't, love to see Nick and David fight in an upcoming IFC, maybe in July. We'll still have good fights. The remaining fighters, they're locked in. And we're going to have some good IFC fights. But it would be a shame if... Nick's fight was canceled and also unfortunately Cox fight has been officially canceled because the opponent for Cox uh, who was rep representing Snack couldn't get his medical in dime so that unfortunately had to be canceled so hopefully we see them fighting in a future IFC as well. So that's also a frustration point for me something that hopefully we either get resolved by tomorrow or we don't. But nevertheless, later this week, I'll be down in Austin at Consensus. And I think it's going to be a good, good time. I've never been to Consensus before. Looking forward to it. And looking forward to the upcoming Karate Combat fight with the IFC fighters. I think it's going to be an amazing time. Any of you guys that will be attending, I think you'll have a good time too. Oh, by the way, I do have a new fancy website created for the IFC. So if you're interested in watching the previous clips or learning more about it, or if you want to participate and you want to apply, head over to InfluencerFightClub.com. It's a great name, InfluencerFightClub.com. And then you can check it out. Got all the previous clips, the fight cards that's lined up right now. And more importantly, if you or you know someone that do want to participate, there is a application form that you can uh, that you can use. So check it out, influencerfightclub.com. All right, I think that's it. I don't really have anything else to say besides me trying to avoid all these cicadas that are flying around. I don't even know the purpose of cicadas. I don't know why like millions and millions of them come out every four years. And this time around, it's like like two different kinds of cicadas coming out at the same time, which doesn't happen like in 18 years. And we got millions of them flying around. I have no idea what their purpose are. Is it just for the birds to eat or, or something else? I have no clue. But, all right, guys. 
I'm going to go finish my walk. And I realized I was just passed up, but, you know, I was slowing down on purpose. Or maybe I wasn't, but I was passed up. All right. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys at the usual time tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. And we'll see where Bitcoin and Ethereum is. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.